everybody. This is Nia Fader. I'm here with the Evolutionary Astrology message. I know I haven't been here for months and a half or something like that, a month. Look, I'm going through a very hard time after the passing of my mother dealing with the deadly poisonous uh, part of uh, heritage wars, which uh, personally I couldn't believe that I'll ever be in, but you know, we don't choose the things we have to deal with, we just have to deal with them as best we can. And that's what I'm trying to do. But it does take a lot of energy away. So I hope that from now on things could be more consistent and I could be here more for you. Um, I want to talk about what's happening between the 8th and the 18th of September 2022 in the sky. I want to talk a bit about what's happening through this time generally in the last few months through this time generally in the last few years just to put it all in perspective and um, that's it so let's start with a few years you know every time these cycles of Saturn and Pluto squaring Uranus in these signs come up and it happened I think only twice in the last thousand years Classically, historically, these have been times of great upgrade of human society, of the laws that construct relationships within that society, and the relationship of the people with the ruler. These have been updated in the past. And I'm talking about from the Magna Carta, which is the first human rights bill ever in 1270 or something like that, I think, and up to the French Revolution, bringing democracy and, and, and uh, you know, uh, the availability of decision to us plain people that were not born of noble blood. We are at a time like this again. And every time we come into a time like this, it always starts with either a natural calamity, like a natural disaster that brings a plague afterwards, or just a plague. These create havoc in society, economy, and bring haste and need for an upgrade in the rules and behaviors of society, and especially the relationship between the ruler and the ruled. Later on, most of the times, we go into a big conflict that gets into a bigger conflict and then lines on the map change and superpowers go up and superpowers go down. Ladies and gentlemen, we are following the script over the last two years exactly. And I want you to know that if the conflict between Ukraine, NATO, USA, Europe in the West, and Russia, China, North Korea, Iran at the East will not be resolved miraculously over the next uh, uh, few months or few years, we are heading into a global conflict. Regrettably, one that we haven't experienced before because the nature of weapons has changed so much and the front lines are no longer at the front lines. Society, civil society is the front line. We should all pray and not only pray, but act in our personal lives in every way we can to bring peace, to bring peace and affinity and understanding and reconciliation in order to avoid this global conflict. The square between Uranus and Saturn that is coming again into the sky after <laughs> we forgot about it for a year or something, uh, coming again into the sky over the next couple of weeks is going to heighten the need for that change. Again, there is a clash between the known, the old, 
the um, you know the systems way and the new the need for upgrade the need for change the need to walk forward and um, we can feel that struggle in our lives in our personal lives as well between renewal and the need to rely on life's basic realities you know we need to make money we need to have a job we need to pay bills we have to stay within the frame yet the frame needs to change so it's a paradox that we are all feeling talking about the last few months financially um, these have been challenging for a lot of people around the world economies are struggling and this is not something that's going to go away. This is something we need to understand happens every time these cycles of planets are here. And people most affected by it are the weaker parts of society, but everyone is. And again, it asserts the need for a change in the relationship between the ruler and the ruled. And I just want to say one thing, you know, this camera filming me now in my uh, Android phone this Android phone is a wonderful machine it can take my fingerprint and I don't need anybody to tell me I'm not knowledgeable enough or wise enough to decide for myself and I have to elect leaders saviors representatives to choose for me why can't I go into the Parliament's site with my fingerprint on my mobile phone and see what's on the list today and say, ah, this is something I would like to be a part of and decide whether I'm for this law or against it. And whatever I don't care about, I'd let the Republican or Democratic app decide for me. Or my 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 in, in in countries in Europe, you know, just an app for whatever party I'm in, political party I'm in. I don't need these leaders and saviors. I am my own leader and savior. I don't need their elections. I don't need their bodyguards. I don't need their cooks. I don't need their secretaries, their spokesperson, their attaches, their offices, their cars their trips abroad, their uh, economic, you know, uh, really, you know, I, I, I don't need the waste of all that money. I want to bring all that money back to us, the rulers. All we need is to leave in place the, clerk, the, the clerks that actually implement what is decided. But we can decide for ourselves and we need to understand that electel, elector, uh, elective democracy, electional democracy, is dying. Is dying. There's a crisis of leadership worldwide because we understand our leaders are just as good as we are, just as faulted as we are. And the age of direct, digital democracy is marching in you are your own leader you are your own savior you are the hero you have been waiting for enough let's talk about this week so um we're coming from a time in which mercury was trining mars and opposing Jupiter. Trining Mars brings more assertivity into the way we communicate and speak and talk um, into our immediate surroundings. With the opposition to uh, Jupiter, this can create a bit of a verbal diarrhea. We could say things in a way that we'd be sorry for later, be too Strong, strong about things and and to state them in not such a politically correct manner um, we are having a full moon in Pisces on the 10th it is conjunct Neptune sextile Uranus and squaring Mars 
There's a lot of energy there, but it's often misdirected. This is a wonderful time for ceremonies and actually trying to direct all this energy into a creative or spiritual outlet. But this can also create a bit of frustration when all this energy doesn't have the, the right outlets to actually be channeled by. I want you to stay away from feelings of victimization, of hopelessness against the great vast ocean of the world and try and connect to the more spiritual side, artistic side of that energy and actually calm yourself through it and not be more anxious because of it. Um, Uranus is trining the sun over the next couple of weeks. This is the best time over the year, the easiest time over the year to actually make changes and upgrade things in a, just in a smooth way, you know, bring the new into your life in the smooth ways, in the smooth way, in a smooth way. Thank you. <laughs> change habits, change, you know, uh, the way your day goes or your diet or your exercise, whatever. This is the time to do it. Or again, you know, things you create, who you are in this world, what light you share. Venus is going to square Mars on the 16th. This is a bit you know, feisty when it comes to relationship or my relationship with the money, with the job, with income. It's certainly a time for action, but not impulsive one, not one that has not thought of the consequences of one's action. What I would do is try and bring it into a more sexual, sensual realm, because this is a great time to actually bring more physicality and sensuality into your relationships. The same day, the sun is opposing Neptune. Now, every time that the planet opposes the sun, that means they are on, that planet is at the closest approach to Earth. We could see Neptune all night long in the sky, and we could certainly feel Neptune at this time of year. This is a feeling that we are in a vast current, in an oceanic current and really we are a bit powerless with our own dinghy you know and uh, rowing our own rows within this oceanic current this is the time to trust the road even though it's misty and we don't know we're heading into the right direction to take responsibility for those oars and take up a pace that doesn't um, you know uh, exhaust you but doesn't keep you in place uh, Saturn and Uranus are coming back at the 15th and we've talked about it already on the 10th Mercury is going to start its retrograde for three weeks and it's going to retrograde from the 20 from the 8th degree of Libra until the 24th degree of Virgo ending at October 2nd there's a lot of ideas about the Mercury retrograde this is especially powerful retrograde because it happens in Virgo which is the natural sign of Mercury but what I want to say about the Mercury retrograde is that it is a time to continue on with everything that you're doing just understand that this is a time that there could be many changes changes in schedule changes in decisions changes in in, in uh, deals just take more time and and more uh, you know uh, space between things so you don't miss the train you don't miss the next flight things like that or if you are within negotiation deals you know need to sign something just understand that this could take a little longer and that you do need to check the small print as long as you do that you're good signs more affected by these but this by this uh, uh, retrograde are mutable signs virgo pisces um, Sagittarius and Gemini and cardinal signs that is uh, Aries and, and uh, Libra and Capricorn and Cancer of course you have to see where this retrograde hits your own natal chart um, yeah so what else what else did I want to talk to you about Sun trining Pluto on the 18th, which is an amazing time to look deep within yourself, understand the things that need to be changed, that need to be purified, things that have been motivating and moving you 
in the past, but these motives are no longer needed or could be altered, could be, you know, um, maybe we, we've grown, maybe we're not, you know, um, acting from the same places with it. And this is a wonderful time to understand deeply who we are and what motivates us and actually change it for the better. Um, Mercury is going to oppose Jupiter again on the 18th and again watch out for verbal diarrhea. This is everything I wanted to say. I want to thank you for listening. I want to remind you that there's private lessons and courses and readings with me over Zoom and in person. You could reach me through the details at the slide at the end. Thank you for being who you are and spreading the light. This is Nia Philo. May we all live long and prosper. Metakoyo Yasin. Bye-bye.